Welcome to Tunacheki's Africa in the News. This is Mekimushi and this is the show where we look at how Western media news organizations cover Africa. Uh, we go through all the propaganda, we go through all the incorrect news, all the fake news, all the, the, the assumptions that they make against Africa and we try to correct it and set the record straight. So uh, in today's video, we'll be looking about at the Western media news information war against Ethiopia, right? Ethiopia is currently having a conflict and there's a lot of misinformation when it comes to how the Western media news organizations are reporting it. Uh, before we start, uh, please make sure to like and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we're almost reaching 1 million subscribers and uh, we will really be happy uh, if you help us uh, achieve our journey quicker. Uh, so let's start. What's happening in Ethiopia, right? So Ethiopia is currently having a conflict with the TPLF. Uh, who are usually uh, around the Tigray region, okay? So when somebody says Ethiopia and Tigray are having a war or a civil law, that's false information. Only the TPLF in the Tigray region uh, is currently uh, the one that's at odds with the Ethiopian government. And uh, unfortunately, it's pushing its innocent people, its innocent civilians, its children, women, together down with it uh, and using them as pawns in, uh, in this uh, coup. Like it's, it's basically a coup that they're trying uh, to take over uh, the Ethiopian, uh, well, like elected Ethiopian government, okay? So uh, how did all this start? Uh, so to summarize quickly, uh, Ethiopia was ruled by the TPLF uh, for around uh, 30 years. Uh, the TPLF was a very brutal and authoritarian regime. Uh, majority of Ethiopians really didn't like the TPLF rule in Ethiopia. And they, they've been struggling for uh, like all the regions from Oromia, from Afar, all the regions have been struggling to get to like to fight for their, like fight for their rights to get what they deserve, uh, like freedom, uh, and not just tribalism. So in 2015, uh, Ethiopians said enough is enough. Uh, they protested, uh, the brutal protests, many people got killed, many people got gunned down, but eventually they gained the independence, uh, which prompted uh, the Ethiopian parliament to uh, put Ibi Hamed, uh, the current prime minister of Ethiopia, to rule the country, right? Uh, after a while, Ibi Hamed conducted, uh, the Ethiopian government conducted elections and uh, Ibi Hamed was now officially elected as uh, the prime minister of um, of Ethiopia who, who and which he currently sits so with this said uh, the TPLF was really really not happy uh, they thought uh, uh, the the prime minister would just be a puppet and uh, like the status quo will remain but Ibi Hamed uh, uh, changed, changed, changed the game uh, first by declaring peace with Eritrea after like a brutal uh, decades long war. And uh, this, uh, this peace treaty got him a Nobel Peace Prize, which a lot of Western people really seem to have a problem with. Like, like it really asks them that he really, uh, like he achieved uh, that achievement, okay? So uh, once he was given that achievement, uh, the TPLF people uh, really like re re really hated it because the TPLF uh, till now has a lot of grievances with the Eritrea based on uh, historical reasons. Okay, so after this, after uh, TPLF, so there's nothing else they can do politically. They decided to attack a base in uh, a federal uh, Ethiopian base uh, that's uh, set up in uh, Tigray. So they attacked this one, which prompted Ethiopia to attack back. And also the TPLF uh, launched missiles to Eritrea, uh, the capital of Eritrea, Asmara, which prompted the Eritreans to enter the war. Okay, so this caused chaos in uh, the Tigray region and uh, uh, it brought in all the international attention. It brought in all the like uh, the NGOs, uh, the UNs, uh, the humanitarian guys who are trying to look out for the Tigray people, right? Uh, and according to uh, like my sources, uh, it's actually the TPLF that uh, has been causing um, a lot of uh, like roadblocks when it comes to helping the Tigray region, right? So. Uh, this uh, then prompted the Western media to look at the whole conflict uh, on the side of the TPLF, right? Since all this conflict started, uh, 
all international media news organizations have been looking at this conflict from the eyes of the TPLF, right? So, uh, like, uh, uh, before we start, uh, a lot of people in Tigray uh, got hurt, a lot of people in Tigray got killed uh, during the conflict, and uh, according also to my sources, uh, most of these people were sent out to the front line uh, by the TPLF, by force, without any weapons, and uh, and uh, you can guess what happened with that, you know, they basically just got gunned down. So, uh, uh, with uh, media news organizations uh, writing articles like this, uh, like articles like this, you, you know, shocking articles like this, and uh, with uh, with uh, me, uh, like media news organizations making news reports like this, like making other news reports like this, like uh, we we are really shocked uh, at how 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 low these Western media news organizations can go. An interview that treats the secretary of the prime minister like this. That is a disinformation that is being perpetrated, Becky. And I dare say this because I also deal directly with some of the. Oh, media oh hold on, Ho hold on. You wanted to have a, a, you, 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 you. What is this information? We have a we have a team trying to get to work on the ground. Hang on, but don't accuse us of, of, of disinformation. Are you, are you suggesting that we... And a spokesperson of a designated terrorist group like this. In the last part of that tweet, sir. You mean uh, the um, money-making enterprise part? Mm-hmm. Yes. Look... Yeah, Abi Abi uh, has been ratcheting up. Like it's so, like it's so mind-boggling uh, how uh, how uh, biased uh, this uh, like uh, this media news organizations can be. Uh, like it, like like it's insane. Uh, this conflict is not as it's being reported. Uh, it's uh, extremely biased towards a known terrorist uh, group called the TPLF, right? Uh, and and. And it's our job uh, as uh, like uh, uh, people who make African content, it's our job to rise up and uh, call them out on this, right? My question is, uh, like they say, journalists and the media are the watchmen of the world. They're the people who watch the governments. They're the people who, like you, keep people, uh, like uh, make governments uh, be on a straight path. But my question is, who will watch the watchmen, right? Uh, who will watch these people? that are supposed to be watching those people, right? So it's our job to watch the watchmen. Uh, so, but the fight is not over. Uh, because of uh, social media, uh, Africans, Ethiopians, and when I say Ethiopians, like millions of Ethiopians have come out, they've protested, they've uh, created a, 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 a social media hashtag called NOMO, right? So the whole concept of NOMO is like NOMO false information, uh, like NOMO war, uh, like like no more conflicts in Ethiopia. Like it's such a peaceful and positive uh, hashtag, and uh, it's been uh, trending. Uh, it's gone viral. Everybody and, uh, and I mean everybody. I just don't mean uh, people from Ethiopia. All Africans, uh, like my friends from Zambia, my friends from Nigeria, everybody, my friends from uh, Uganda, everybody is joining this uh, no more campaign uh, to show solidarity with the people of Ethiopians. Right? Technically, as of we speak right now, if I'm not wrong. The people of Ethiopia don't want the TPLF, right? Uh, the people of Ethiopia do not want the TPLF. The people of Ethiopia did not vote for the TPLF, right? So why does uh, like the West, uh, the the West uh, Western media news organizations, why are they forcing the TPLF on the people of Ethiopia, right? They're telling them, hey guys, these people uh, are terrorists to us, right? We do not want them. Please, we do not want them. They're, 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 they're attacking other regions. They're threatening our capital city. They're threatening our way of life, right? They're, they're, they're joining other militias, uh, like other, other terrorist groups uh, associated with them to try to make a, a frontal attack on them. And, and the people of Ethiopia are simply saying one thing, right? Uh, like locally in Ethiopia and in the diaspora, the, the thing they're saying is that they do not want the TPLF, right? Like regardless, the people of Ethiopia want peace. Sim like simple as that, they want peace. They do not want the TPLF. So my question is, why doesn't the Western media news organization portray that? Why do, don't they report what the actual people of Ethiopia, the people who are actually suffering, uh, like uh, saying and uh, wanting? People like you, if you're an African, uh, you have no business. Like if you're an African here, if you're an African in the diaspora, uh, you have no business watching things like BBC Africa. There's no 
Africa in BBC Africa, CNN Africa. There's no Africa in CNN Africa, right? There, there are still Western media news organizations whose whose purpose is to serve the people who live and the governments who live in the West. That's their only reason. There's nothing African about them, right? From Reuters, from AP, just because just because somebody is in your country reporting a, a certain piece of news and has Africa under their actual logo does not make them even one bit uh, like African, okay? So uh, my solution, my call, my call to action is that if you're an African, if... Uh, if you're an African in the diaspora, if uh, like if you've got uh, like if you can think for yourself, uh, stop watching this, uh, stop watching this uh, uh, Western media news organizations, right? Go local, go local. Like watch what your local news person is saying. Like the person who's reporting your news most likely knows what's going on than a person who's sitting in New York who's just been given something to read, right? So, 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 what else can you do? Uh, you can do what we do. You can. Take your smartphone, make a video, and tell your story, right? Uh, you do not need a billion dollars budget like uh, these uh, media houses have. You do not need uh, thousands of uh, journalists and correspondents like these media news organizations have. All you need is you, like, uh, like, uh, like your network, know what's going on in the country, uh, like uh, talk to people, come back home, take your phone, record, upload it. Upload it on uh, YouTube, upload it on Facebook, upload it on TikTok, up, just upload it, tell your own story. That's what we urge everybody to do. And that's why uh, we do even our show called Africa in the News, okay? So uh, with that said, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like I'm sure uh, this one was a brief um, episode, but we will go in depth and uh, talk more about what's going on in Ethiopia and solutions. Uh, we're just not uh, bringing here problems, we want solutions and we want this conflict to end now. Please, please, please uh, make sure to subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, share these videos with friends and family, and again, hear our call. Uh, don't watch these uh, propaganda factories, right? Please don't watch them. Create your own or support your own African-made uh, content uh, creator who's talking about these matters, okay? So thank you for watching. This has been Mikey Moshi from Tunachiki, and uh, as always, we'll catch you in the next one.